Kentucky is known for neck and neck races, but tonight's Democratic primary rivals any Derby Day. I'm Wolf Blitzer in the CNN Election Center. We want to welcome our viewers in the United States and around the world. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, they went back and forth all night, sometimes hundreds of votes apart, sometimes dozens. Let's get a key race alert right now. 99% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a very slight lead of 1,813 votes. Uh, 1,813 votes out of more than 420,000 votes that have been counted. 46.7% for Hillary Clinton, 46.3% for Bernie Sanders. We're also counting down right now to another state contest. Both parties are holding primaries in Oregon. Polls close there in just an hour. Sanders, Bernie Sanders has been hoping to delay uh, Hillary Clinton's march to the nomination, while on the Republican side, the presumptive nominee, Donald Trump, is looking to reach that magic number of delegates ahead of the GOP convention. Uh, tonight, there's also concern among Democrats that disturbances at this past weekend's Nevada State Democratic Convention could be repeated at the national convention in July. Let's go to CNN's Manu Raju. He's got the latest on this very worrisome development. Uh, Manu, what are you learning? That's right, Well, What we're hearing from Democratic senators, Democratic leaders, is that what we saw in Nevada on, over the weekend, in which Bernie Sanders supporters really felt that they were disenfranchised from the process and led to angry protests and outbursts, both at Hillary Clinton supporters and at the party establishment, worried that this could be replicated come July and that this could actually hurt efforts for the party to unite and to heal and to go after Donald Trump. Now, earlier you spoke with Wolf Jeff Weaver, the uh, campaign campaign manager of Bernie Sanders, who said that the Nevada situation was an anomaly, something almost in an isolated incident. And we should caution, most uh, Sanders events are peaceful events. But I've talked to a number of Democratic senators, and some have said that actually this is not an anomaly. They have noticed this uh, over the over all over the country. Of course, they are Hillary Clinton supporters. And when they talk about uh, promote Hillary Clinton, they get backlash from Bernie Sanders supporters. Jean Shaheen, New Hampshire Democrat, told me uh, yesterday Yesterday, when I had a chance to speak with her about this, uh, she said that that this is uh, it's, this has been something that she has never experienced before. She said it's been interesting to me because I've never experienced that before, and I've been involved in every presidential campaign since 1976. We've had lots of people who have supported different candidates, and I've never seen that kind of behavior before. She's talking about heckling, outbursts, people interrupting her while she's speaking. Uh, that is really a development that party officials and leaders, who particularly ones who support Hillary Clinton, they're seizing on after the Nevada episode and hoping that this can convince Bernie to either rein in his supporters or push him out of the race come June when voting ends, Wolf. All right. Thanks very much, Manu Raju, reporting for us. Let's bring in the chair of the Democratic National Committee, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Congresswoman, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Wolf. I interviewed just a little while ago Bernie Sanders campaign manager Jeff Weaver, who had some rather tough words for the Nevada State Democratic Party. Listen to what he told me. We do not condone any kind of violence or threats. Uh, that's unacceptable. Bad language. We don't. That's unacceptable. Uh, but we are not going to allow uh, the millions of people who supported Bernie Sanders to be sort of rolled over uh, in places like Nevada uh, by the way they handled that convention. The Sanders campaign says that the Nevada State uh, Party, the Democratic Party, prevented a fair and transparent process. Was it unfair? You know, well, first of all, let me just reiterate that the Democratic National Committee remains neutral in this primary based on our rules. But when I heard what happened at the Nevada State Democratic Convention this weekend, I was deeply disturbed. Regardless of any campaign or candidate's frustration over process, there should never be a but when it comes to condemning violence and intimidation. Violence and intimidation are never acceptable under any circumstances, and what happened at that convention was unacceptable. I was not at the convention, and the Democratic National Committee didn't have anything to do with what, what the, uh, the, the way the meeting was run, but the bottom line is that we've had the same rules in place you know, that elected Barack Obama, and these rules were adopted for state parties all across the country in 2014. They were followed, and even if the Sanders supporters were frustrated, there is never, under any circumstance, a place for violence and intimidation to be resorted to in, re in response. Congresswoman, the Nevada State Democratic Party said, and I'm quoting now, that Sanders' campaign staff and supporters incited violence and chaos. Uh, those are 
pretty strong words. Does the DNC believe the Sanders campaign that staffers actually incited violence? Well, I, like I said, I was not there, but I, I do know because there was video and acknowledgement that chairs were thrown at the stage, that violence was used, that the state party chair, Roberta Lang, who has worked in the trenches to elect Democrats for decades, has been threatened. Her children, her, her, her child has, been, has had implied threats where people have called and said they know where her child goes to school. This is un unacceptable behavior. And the Sanders campaign and Senator Sanders himself should not only outright condemn that specific conduct, but they also need to take steps to prevent it and make sure that their supporters understand that the, the, the most important and correct way to respond to any frustration they have over process is to be civil and orderly, not respond with violence and intimidation. And that needs to be unequivocally condemned. And unfortunately, it has not been unequivocally condemned. Have you reached out directly to Bernie Sanders to talk to him about your concerns? Uh, I have not. Uh, we have communicated through our senior staff, and that it, I, I sent a statement, and Senator Reid and others have spoken directly with Senator Sanders. Uh, I think it should be pretty clear to anybody that violence and intimidation is never acceptable under any circumstances, and it should be condemned, and there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Why not call him? Why not reach out? You're the leader of the Democratic Party. Why not make, make a phone call to Senator Sanders and tell him exactly what you just told us? You know, after I heard that Senator Reid had had, that Leader Reid had had a conversation with Senator Sanders and he uh, publicly announced that he felt that Senator Sanders was going to respond appropriately and issue a statement, uh, I was comfortable that you know, one conversation was enough. Um, unfortunately, the senator's response was anything but acceptable. Um, it, it certainly did not condemn his supporters for, for acting violently or engaging in intimidation tactics and instead added more fuel to the fire. Um, like I said, you, you can be frustrated with the process, but in the United States of America, and especially in the Democratic Party, it is never appropriate to act in any way other than civilly, civilly and in an orderly fashion and address process concerns in, in a civil way. It, it is never okay for violence and intimidation to be the response to that so, frustration. That's what happens on the, on the, uh, with the Trump campaign. We can never resort to the tactics that they, uh, that they engage in. Congresswoman, uh, how are you going to make sure, given the anger out there, given the passion out there, that uh, you can prevent this kind of chaos from developing at the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia? Well, I think that the, at, as a result of this happening this weekend, we will have conversations both at the staff level as well as I, my having conversations with the candidates so that we can make sure that, that both campaigns are focused on making sure that we can allow this process uh, for the duration of the primary to play out in a civil and orderly way and make sure that we don't do anything that is going to make, make it more challenging for us to unify behind our eventual nominee so we can elect a Democratic president. But it is incumbent upon all Democratic leaders to make sure that they lead, that they speak out against violence and intimidation, that those tactics be condemned, and that instructions be given and plans made to communicate with supporters who may not always be familiar with the, with, with the way the democratic process works. Make sure they understand it and, what they can, and let them know what they can expect and what the expectations of each campaign is of their own supporters in terms of the way they act as the uh, remaining delegates election process takes place. Congresswoman, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein of California, a woman you know well, she thinks Bernie Sanders should drop out of the race after the voting concludes on June 7th in California. Should Senator Sanders do that? No, I think Senator Sanders is right to have respect for his supporters and make sure that the remaining primaries can play out and those voters be given an opportunity to cast their ballots. And I'm sure the campaign is going to make it, and the senator are going to make a decision at the end of the, uh, the primary nominating contest about what their next steps are. Congressman Debbie Wasserman Schultz is the chair of the Democratic National Committee. Uh, Congressman, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Well, Thank you. Uh, let's go over uh, to Dana and David for.